As we take our wellness approach to supporting the reproductive system this month, let's look at some of the challenges that we face that are unique to the reproductive system. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And there are some challenges for the reproductive system that are kind of different than, than others. I mean, some of them overlap, of course, but I'm going to go over some of the common challenges so that we can kind of orient as to um, how to go about this from a wellness perspective, how to support our reproductive system from a wellness perspective. Now, when I mean reproductive system, I do mean the biological definition of reproduction which, and, and, the, and the anatomical and physiological processes that go to support that. Now, reproduction, we mean babies, okay? So, um, you know, some of you might be thinking, okay, you're talking about baby stuff, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't care about babies, but you do. Um, you do from a societal and cultural perspective, we got to have babies in order to, you know, otherwise the whole world will be empty of humans for in about a hundred years. But the, um, the, uh, the other thing is that we all have those parts, okay? So no, it doesn't matter whether you're past that point and those parts have been removed, in which case you've got scar tissue and you know, you've gotta be thinking about how to support the system down there because now it's all been kind of cut open and patched back together. Um, if you're past those points, you gotta take care of those parts. Uh, so you know that you still have a vested interest in this material. So I hope you continue with me uh, in this wellness uh, uh, journey for the reproductive system this month. Okay, so um, these are not necessarily in any particular order, but the one of the issues that we have in in our fertility and in reproductive system is poor nutrition. And some studies have been uh, have been done that the the uh, poorer the nutrition, the worse the, the fertility, okay? So you can't produce your hormones properly, you can't produce the eggs and the sperm uh, properly. The worst sperm counts are among people who, uh, who have the worst diets, okay? So there's a connection between our uh, diet and the quality of our fertility. Now, I'm gonna port that into, if you, if you, you know, you're gonna feel better in general if you have a better diet. So that those things go hand in hand. Feeling good, being fertile, uh, being you know virile, being fertile. That you know, those are going to go hand in hand. Okay, so that one kind of makes sense. We got to make sure we get good quality food. That's part of our flood the body with nutrients. We'll talk more about as we get into the specific products that we're using. We'll talk more about specific nutrients, zinc for men, that kind of thing. Um, another big issue for the reproductive system that's a challenge. I mean, the, the, some of these, like I said, are challenges for all of them, but they have unique. Uh, uh, issues. Toxicity is a big issue. In our culture, in our society, we've got all these hormone disrupting chemicals uh, that are, are it, it affecting uh, sorry, affecting both men and women, uh, men differently than women. Uh, we got the estrogens uh, that, are, that are blocking or messing up the estrogen cycles and, and affecting the men. So we've got these hormone disruptors that are coming in the form of plastic residues, phthalates, things like that. Uh, and I've, I've done a number of videos on these things. We've also got this issue of how the skin absorbs the, the um, toxicity, toxins absorbed through the skin, or well, anything absorbs through the skin, 300 times more efficient right there at the reproductive system, right in the for scrotum for the men and labia for the, for the women. And so that's again, a big issue that increases its toxicity. So we need to be looking at you know, that organic underwear much more seriously. Um, stress is a huge factor in reproduction. Uh, when the body is stressed, the you know the the system goes say okay I don't need to worry about digestion. Uh, if, if I don't need to worry about reproduction if I'm so stressed that I mean if I if I like you know from the life threatening stress like if I'm getting chased by a lion it shuts down some of these other processes. Okay, and reproduction is one of those that gets shut down in response to stress. I can't deal with this. Okay, I'm not gonna have a baby. Uh, that's just basically you know the the way that goes. Now there's some some physiological things that happen with stress and that is. It starts to divert the hormones. Uh, you know, one of the one of the ways that it shuts down uh, reproduction is to divert the hormones into producing cortisol and other things. And so, with the sex hormones, the the estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, all goes down uh, uh, in response to stress, especially progesterone. Okay. And so, we want to make sure we have some resources left over to make the hormones necessary. You might say, well, no, I don't want the resources to make a baby. I'm telling you, I'm out. I'm away from the baby thing. No, you're not. You 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 want the resources to be fertile. Uh, that means the rest of you is balanced, okay? That means things are good. Uh, and so this is what we're dealing with. Structure is another big factor. It's really a big factor in, in the uh, challenge to the reproductive system. And that is we sit and we compress 
uh, over the reproductive system. We cut off circulation to the uterus ovaries. We cut off circulation to the prostate and, and, and the testes. So we're not getting good circulation to the reproductive system. And you, that's why we see all these advertisements for these, these products that increase circulation, uh, you know, and, and why we have the, these problems with for, like for men, for ED and all the rest of that stuff. It, that is all associated with circulation for the most part. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's one of these things that posture is making a big impact on that. So let's, but I'm going to talk a little bit more. I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about one of the, the thing I is totally unique to the reproductive system. And it is the biggest, I think the biggest societal and individual, potentially individual challenge to reproduction above toxicity, above all the rest of it. And that is attitude, attitude toxicity. We have a hostility toward fertility. It's a hostile environment. We, we you know, this whole idea of overpopulation, the idea, you know, if you have more than two kids, you're, you're something wrong with you, you're an environmental hazard. Um, we just don't have a very good attitude, uh, supportive attitude about reproduction. Uh, and, and like I said many times, oh, thank God I'm done with that. Okay, you're never done with it, okay? You're never done with it. And, and this is the, the fact of this, this is part of our human biology. We cannot be done with it. So please look at this, uh, you know, let's look with this attitude that we are propagating. If you're past the, uh, the childbearing years, then look at correcting your attitude that can help pass down to the next generation. Um, then you're in the sex generation, the, the sexual revolution generation, which did not have a good attitude, right? I mean, so what I'm saying is we're, we're, we're creating an attitude problem down the generations uh, and we're not fixing it, okay? So we all need, at all, at all ages, we need to get on the same page and on, on the same uh, 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 attitude adjustment, if you will. And uh, no one likes to hear they need an attitude adjustment. We all need an attitude adjustment when it comes to the sexual, uh, sex and sexuality. We are all have had abuse and we're having abuse right now. Our culture is so aggressive against fertility and against the biological uh, uh, issues that we, we need to you know, sort of look at this. And I think attitude is a big factor. Many people have experienced direct abuse, okay? And, uh, and that this, is, this is horrible. This is a really bad and damaging thing. Sex and sexuality is something that is part of our very nature. As I've said before, it's one of those things that almost is more powerful than our, our individual survival is the, the survival of the species, right? It's, it's amazing and beautiful, and it's something that forces us to be outside of ourselves. It's the only thing in the wellness category that forces us to be outside. Of, of we you cannot reproduce on your own. We're not asexual. We're not clonal. Uh, we don't spore. You know we don't have spores that come off, uh, come out of our ears and make new babies. Uh, other other plants do that. So God created us different uh, than than. I mean, He could have created us asexual. Asexual. He could have, and He could have made it so that we you know we bud out a a a new egg uh, out the side and a new a new little person. He didn't do it that way. Um, and, and so it says in the Bible that he created us in his own image, right? And that would be that we are, that we reproduce by joining together. We, there's, we're more when we come together in male and female. And so if you look at God as a Trinity, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit, he's never alone. He's not alone. He didn't, he didn't want us to be alone. We're not meant to be alone in this. And this is the sexuality and reproduction is one of those that absolutely highlights that element of not wanting of we are, cannot be alone. And this goes so against our American culture of rugged individualism. I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to build my own business. I'm going to be my own man. I'm going to be my own. Well, we can't. Uh, in the area of reproduction, it doesn't work. And so this idea of being alone actually turns into a reproductive selfishness, a sexual selfishness. I'm going to be, I'm going to do it alone there. And, and you just, that doesn't work for, for sexuality and reproduction. Okay. Sex and reproduction really get, they, they're the same thing. If you want really good, uh, really good sexual maturity and sexual re uh, uh, relationships, we need to have it all in the context of reproduction. We know this and the bonding we've heard, maybe you've heard of the research on bonding hormone. 
uh, the more sexual partners you have, the lower the bonding hormone, okay? And so in order to have really good, healthy sexual relationships, we should be monogamous. We should have one partner for the rest for our whole life. And I'm, this is not just uh, uh, me talking as a Catholic. This is you know science that shows this. And so it's one of these things that we need to look at our attitude about sex and sexuality and take a more mature look at it. Uh, and say, okay, now I, one of the things that I'm going to do this month is we're going to use some oils because like I said, we all have some amount of abuse and, and the abuse comes from culture and society. Just look at the magazine racks and young women are going to be totally, men are distracted and young women are abused by the, by the covers on the magazine, right? If your breasts aren't this, this big and showing, then you're not a, a sexy woman. Well, but then you don't even want to be that kind of woman that's on the thing. So it's a total conflict, right? These poor young women uh, growing up in today's age, uh, you know, this is this is soft porn right there on the on the cover at the at the grocery store on the cover of the magazines, and what's the what's a teen girl supposed to think? She doesn't have that. I mean, it's like and and, and she may never have that, so therefore she can't be sexy. But then again, if she really looks at it, she, she didn't want she didn't want that. That's all sleazy. So it's just a totally conflicted message, and we have we have very little that that is being done to combat that message. Uh, poor young men. I mean, it's like you know you can't get visually assaulted. Men are visually stimulated, women are emotionally stimulated. We'll talk about that. Um, but we can't even uh, you know, go anywhere without that constant visual assault. Um, and the idea of modesty is now out the window completely, right? And so it's this, this we, we are being assaulted individually and culturally being assaulted. So we definitely need help. And that help is going to come... Uh, in a variety of different ways. This month, like I said, if we can join me in, in, uh, in I'm, I'm trying not to be, hopefully you're not feeling judged and judged, you know, that this is, oh, this guy's so judgmental about all this stuff. I'm taking a wellness and biological approach. So if you'll just join me and, and let's try to keep our, our, our hackles down uh, and, and talk about, um, you know, how much we can do in terms of together, how we can try to get uh, our attitudes together that line up uh, consistently with our, our biology and with the, the individual and cultural benefit uh, of, of how we do this reproduction uh, uh, thing. But let's look at this uh, from a standpoint of how much we have to overcome. And uh, and so the essential oils this month, I've got a couple essential oils this month, Sara and Valor, that are going to really help us, I think, to uh, to help you know bring us on get get move us forward and get us get us more balanced in this area. So uh, look for those. We're gonna we're gonna be using those a lot and doing some breathing. Okay. So as we do our breathing and we do our wellness, we're gonna have some fun uh, breathing into the the reproductive system. I might even do some uh, a little bit of discussion about breathing in sex. Uh, you know, I mean, it, this is, we're talking about, uh, I, I'm not trying to get too personal, but the fact is, I think people aren't, aren't really taking advantage of the full, of the full resources available when they bring, as they come to the, the uh, process of, of uh, the, the reproductive benefit. Now, sex, like I said, reproduction has sex and, um, is, is babies and bonding. Sex is babies and bonding. We don't have very many times when we can even have a baby, so most of the time it's for bonding. But uh, so we need to have an, a, a proper attitude about that, and it's it's one of those beautiful, beautiful things uh, that God has given us is this this total immersive union in sex, which requires that we we do have uh, orgasm. I hope I'm not being. I mean, I know. I, I mean, if if. You know, people don't want to talk about these things, but I'm willing to talk about this. Uh, but hang in there with me, and uh, and you know, we're, we'll we'll go through some of these things this month. And I know my viewing is probably going to go way down uh, for for the conservative people who are watching because it's like, oh man, I don't I don't talk about all that stuff. But um, it's worth talking about, and and people don't. And the, the only time you ever get any uh, any any information is you have to go to some weird Eastern thing, or you have to go to some you know, and all of a sudden it's like, well, I don't want to I don't want to go there. Okay. I know I'm kind of all over the map on this video, but um, this is the, these are some of the big challenges that are happening that we don't talk about sex and sexuality and reproduction. We don't talk about it, and we need to start talking about it in a more wellness and mature way. And I think if we did that, everyone would have a more ordered uh, kind of relationship with sex and sexuality, okay? So this month uh, uh, is, is all about sex and sexuality and reproduction. 
uh, and we're going to keep the reproductive he organs healthy. Yes, that is absolutely part of it. And we'll talk talking about the supplements and how we're going to uh, go forward with that. But we're also going to do some attitude checks uh, and use the oils and and help us to really have a healthy, uh, really healthy attitude societal about all this. Okay, happy wellness, one day at a time. We'll see you tomorrow.